If you've been around here or know who I am, you know that Super Mario Sunshine is one of my favorite games of all time. But somehow, I never once thought to give speedrunning a try on the game. I mean, I've done everything about this game on this channel at this point. Tried to 100% sunshine along Mario 64 and Galaxy in 24 hours. Attempt to make a series from the game. <coughs> Capitalize off the game's gimmick and turn it into a video. The second part is still in the works. And bought a $1,000 Super Mario Sunshine figure. And yes, I am proud of my investment. My parents would say otherwise. I thought to myself, trying any percent speedrun of this game would make for some fun content to truly put my brain to the test and see if I know this game as well as I do. And especially with Count It zero speedrun experience on Super Mario Sunshine, it'd make things a lot more interesting. Now, I watched the occasional SGDQ speedrun by Tofu back in 2012, but in terms of hand on experience, I got nothing. Seeing I was playing on the 3D All-Stars version of this game, there are not as many positions for me to beat. The end time I'm hoping to achieve is a 130 run, which would put me at the least get me to the top 150 in the world for any percent. And even if I don't reach it, then th that just kind of sucks, I don't know. If you don't know what an 80% speedrun is, it's beating the game with a bare minimum in the fastest time possible. That means, in the context of Super Mario Sunshine, beating Shadow Mario in each area on the 7th area, meaning that the least we can collect before heading to Bowser is 43 Shine Sprites. Now, you may be asking yourselves, am I going into this with any practice runs under my belt? <laughs> <laughs> no. We're just jumping right into it. I believe the years of playing this game, I'm pretty sure I could just hop into it like it's nothing. <gasps> the timer officially starts when I press start on the file select box. Slowing off the run, calling this a new file timing method. In Super Mario Sunshine speedruns, there are two different types of way to start. One where you start on the file select screen, which is where I will be starting, and the other option is the peach file, which basically means you skip the first and second cutscene, those being the opening cutscenes, and the two minute long cutscene being introduced to Flood. Originally, I was going to only talk about the cool skips in this run, but I think talking about each level individually will work better for the viewer. If you are wanting to see a certain area in this game, there are timestamps below in the description, but watching the video in its entirety will help out so much more. Also, did you know 29% of you are subscribed? The airship is a fast one. Grabbing Flood and shooting the polluted piranha plant, and with the plant, you could literally never stop shooting the plant, and you can still be okay. For some reason, you can keep shooting him even while his mouth is closed. It still will work, but won't do any damage until his mouth is open. You'll normally be spending around 3 minutes and 20 seconds on this level, but after that run does take a big slowdown, in that you have to watch Mario get evicted for 3 minutes. The guilty party sits among us. But once that is done, you can kill the second polluted piranha plant on Delfino Plaza and quickly kill Shadow Mario. Going into Bianco 1, you can actually skip the very first mission entirely. Basically, you can hop on one of the Skeeters and climb onto the windmill, completely ignoring the piranha plant, and gang to PD Piranha. The quickest way to take out PD is by standing underneath his leaves. For some reason, doing this will stop him from standing around for like 10 seconds and turning around. With doing this, he will ignore the 10 second turnaround and just open his mouth like the slut he is. It takes about three times to take him out, to which overall is around a minute of the mission. Mission three or four are quick levels that can easily be beaten with some good platforming, with level three being a floodless level and level four being a red coin mission. And mission five is where the run can be nice, or it can be bad. I sadly diagnosed myself with not having a good run syndrome. PD has a variety of set paths he can take, and depending on where he can go, can either kill a run or save one. For example, thanks to SMS speedrunner Noki Noki, made a diagram for this level. PD can either go to S8, S4, or S1. The best path for him to take that saves the most time is S1, S2, and S3. Now you may see there are plenty of other paths he can take. God forbid he goes down N4 and N6, because you may as well just go back to therapy lessons. One thing to mention about this level is that PD now has a new attack where he spawns tornadoes if you stand a certain distance. But once again, if you stand under his leaf, that shouldn't be a worry. And you'll be out of that level in around two to three minutes, depending on the RNG that is. Mission six is a floodless mission, so there isn't anything really to comment about this. Mission seven is a Shadow Mario stage, and similar to Delfino Plaza, if you spam spray him at the right spot, then you can insta kill him. Now we head over to Rico Harbor, which can either be a great section of the run or a horrible one. Mission one or two are quite straightforward. With mission one, all you have to do is ground pound Goopa Bloopers, Blooper Bloopers, four tentacles at the same time, shoot his face with water, and pull on his face twice to get the shine. Mission two is just a 30 second race around, of course. There is a skip midway through the track, which can save around 10 seconds, but I prefer just going around because I'm basic and I 
it doesn't hurt anyone. Level 3 is probably the quickest mission in the entire run. Let me explain everything as best I can. Starting off the mission, you want to do two dives, followed by a delayed spin jump to get onto the ship right in front of you, followed by using the hover nozzle to get you on your feet quicker. Then on top of the ship, spin the control stick in a full 360 and spray water while doing so. While you're in the spinning animation, slide on over onto a very small orange slant on the side of the ship. And around a quarter of a second after touching it, jump and you will hopefully go flying towards where the shiny sprite is. Then when all is said and done, use the hover nozzle to get under the construction. And hopefully if you're high enough, grab the barbed wire underneath and grab the shine. All right, now that I've told you how to get the shine, let's look at how it works in motion. Yeah, this is like a 20, this is like a 12 second shine. Anyway, mission four is a floodless mission. I somehow had a lot of problems with this mission. I managed like three times in the same area because I wanted to be quick because it's like, you know, a speed run. Uh. Episode five is another Goopa Blooper fight. Fight? It's a race. Oh my. Episode five is another Goopa Blooper race. And mission six is an eight red coin. When grabbing the eight red coin, there is a chance, depending on how you grab it, you can die instantly. So be careful. Mission seven is Shadow Mario. <sighs> Chill out, beach. <laughs> no. So you remember when I told you Rico 3 was the quickest? Wait until you see this. Gelato Beach Episode 1 is the most complex level of the entire game, especially for beginners who are wanting to get into speedrunning. See, a tale as old as time, Gelato Beach was often considered one of the worst areas for speedrunners because of the horrible A-Red coin mission in Episode 6 and the slow-paced sandbird mission. If you were to do all the levels at best, you can get up to 18 minutes in this entire area in total. But what if I told you there was a way you can turn that 18 minutes into 3 to 4 minutes? See, Jalala Beach is the only zone in the entire game that has the 8th Shine Sprite spawned at all times. Meaning that if there was some way for you to grab it, you could skip every level and go straight to level 7. Right away. And, well, lucky for us, 2014 SMS speedrunner Toval discovered a skip called Gelato Skip. Which involves a coconut and a well-timed hover. What you're going to want to do is grab a coconut, make your way over to the hut, and where the shine lies and drop it on the floor. After that, grab onto the pole to the left with the camera looking to the left, get up onto the pole and lock the camera. Then jump backwards behind the coconut, trying not to lose that camera position. Do either a spin jump or a triple jump onto the roof of the hut. Line yourself up with the thick black line. Drop the coconut and run into the coconut while it rolls down. Now, this part is more of a feeling. People always say different ways to do this trick. I just do it when it feels right. When you have the gut feeling, you're then going to have to hover towards the roof now, two different things can happen here. You may undershoot and clip back up or under, but if you get it just right, you'll slide through once and you'll get under the blender. I would normally just hold the hover button down until it gives out itself, and you're basically all good from that point on. Doing this trick can save you basically 20 minutes from doing all the other levels in the run, meaning you skip level one, two, three, four, five, six. AMs in my bank account. Yeah. And could go straight to Shadow Mario and get his shine. I know this is an essay type video, but I just want to show me getting this on my first try in a run. Oh my fucking god! I did oh. oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! <sighs> right, with that done, Peanut Park is okay, I guess. Some of the skips in this are minor, but they aren't no gelato beach skips, such as in Mission 1. Normally, you would chase Shadow Mario to the little pool area, and then a one, two minute cutscene would play, but if you slide right as you pass the old Noki, pause and then exit the stage. For some reason, it skips the cutscene, saving you around one to two minutes. And when in the boss fight, once you defeat Mecha Bowser, once he starts breathing fire again and explosions start going off, if you do the exact same thing you did at the start of the mission, you'll skip the three minute cutscene in the run, saving around four minutes total in just one stage alone. Mission 2 is a floodless mission. You're normally meant to kill the mole on top of the cannon, but you could just jump onto him with a well-timed jump and avoid killing him. But still, it is a floodless level, so 
uh, I don't know what to say. Level 3 is a 8 red mission. It's mainly the ship I see most people have problems with, but aside from that one annoying part, it's whatever, once again, it's an 8 red mission. Mission 4 has you kill 5 Yoshi egg dinos that are harming the sunflowers somehow. With this mission, one of the best things you can do is get as many of them aggro so you swiftly kill them in one go. At most, you'll be getting around 4, but if you are quick with them and don't get hurt, you can get all 5 though. I never got it. This is also where we unlock Yoshi in the game, but he is really only useful in around a total of two missions in the entire run. While we have Yoshi, we can quickly use him to eat the giant pineapple at, that leads us to Serena Beach. But moving on, mission five is the Ferris wheel stage where the developers made this level difficult on purpose. But if you go to where the eighth red coin mission is back in mission three, you can just jump through the deadly Ferris wheel. Just make sure once you kill the electric coopers, you don't jump off the Ferris wheel like I did. Mission 6 is another floodless mission, but you need an orange Yoshi to enter. Episode 7, you get the idea. Now we move on to Noki Bay. Mission 1 is a rematch with the mole from Peanut Park, but we actually have to kill him. It's not too difficult, just throw three bombs at him. If there still is one of the bombs on the battlefield, there is a chance they are able to push you around and push you all the way down to the bottom of the well, which can in some ways kill an entire run. If you have run the game and it has happened to you, Godspeed to you. The second mission you expect to go through a maze in the wall to have a third encounter with the Goopa Blooper Pooper, but rather than doing that, go to where you fight the mole and grab the spring on the right. Run into the wall and take a swan dive and clip into the area where the shine is. Somehow during my run I messed up and I lost a minute of my run because I just dived the complete wrong way. Mission 3 is an 8 red coin mission in a bottle that can be a little tedious. Back when 3D All Stars originally came out, the flood and the water levels was horrific to control. But they eventually fixed it, which is nice. The only strategy I have is just don't suck. There you go. You're welcome. Mission 4 is a battle against the eels, which you have to clean the teeth of a fused couple of eels. What makes this stage bad for a run is you slowly descend to the bomb and it takes around a minute to finally do anything. I have no idea if there is a strat to doing it faster, but, but just be consistent. Shoot the teeth and you're done. Mission 5 is El Pantissimo. If you don't know who this is, it's just the mailman from Majora's Mask. As long as you get to the flag in around 30 seconds, you'll be okay. Mission 6 is a floodless stage once again. What makes this one different than any other is that this one has a special route where if you somehow in 16 seconds get from the start to the spinning wooden plank, you can have basically task like movement. But, well, the footage speaks for itself. Good start. I'm not even telling you what happens next. Noki 7. Serena Beach. The best way to- <laughs> oh, oh! The best way to beat this stage at a consistent speed is by spraying the manta ray with flood. Obviously. But if you are playing on Switch, you'll be free to spam this puppy with no lag, making the Switch version of Mario Sunshine objectively better. Level 2 is another floodless mission. Just good movement is needed. Oh no. Level 3 is where things start to- become interesting in the zone. See, level 3 requires you to grab Yoshi by finding a pineapple in one room on its own which makes no sense and to bring that fruit to the so-called free thinker himself and go through some giant fuck off vent and inject it out into a room that has the shine. Very suspicious to have such a room take so long to get to wasting f around three to four minutes. But what if we just, you know, Hopped over the wall by grabbing the banana next to the Yoshi egg. You can take him to the top of the hotel and start performing standstill backflips. And at the peak of the jump, release a banana and hopefully go through the wall, saving you around 5 minutes of the run. Next mission being yet another floodless mission. Now with this one, getting to the mission is the part where we try to save time. As we are now inside the casino below the hotel, what we're doing is a triple jump to the left side waterfall. Stick with me here viewers, I promise this makes sense. Jump off the wall the waterfall is on, land on top of the theatre screen where the puzzle is, grab onto an invisible ledge holding down L, scooch across to a certain area on the invisible plane, it's more of a gut feeling for this, and jump into the green pipe. The rest of the missions in this zone are straightforward. Kill King Boo, pull on Mr Beast and clean the beach, and commit a crime. Final zone, that being Pianta Village. Mission 1 is cleaning the dogs. As usual, it requires speed and also, once you clean the chain jumps, Flood tells you to be kind to your pets. Mission 2 is a side scroller against El Pantissimo. Mission 3 has the entire village covered in lava, and to make your way to the shine, you have to waste around 2 minutes underground climbing on vines and doing all this other stuff that is just bad. So, what if instead, 
we damage boost through the lava and using some of the swip and stews and beat the lava in around 45 seconds. Sounds better, doesn't it? Anyway, mission four is dragging the giant chain chomp over the hot tub to cool him off. As long as you stand in front of some of the paths, he will basically guide himself to the hot tub itself. Mission five is considered one of the worst levels in the game. And originally, I disagreed, but that could just be because I play the game as much as I played Team Fortress 2. That being religiously. I still think it isn't that hard. Pulling off the speedrun trick, however, is incredibly hard when starting off. You have to make your way down to the orange juice generator. Yes, that is what it's called according to the Super Mario Wiki. Sidestep down to the tree so you clip while having a hover nozzle out. Start spraying and moving into the spot where the hole is. And hopefully, if your angle is correct, you'll clip right through, skipping having to go to the tree inside the village and getting Yoshi, which loses around a minute. But the hard part of the level comes in the form of the Floodless mission. I can literally give you a 10 second rundown of this entire stage. Talk to the first piano, wait for the bigger piano to be further from the next one. Talk to the next piano, no real timing is needed here. Same with the next one. Wait until the last piano is on the side of the shine. Get up and talk to him and spam the Mario camera to guarantee you'll get the shine. You're welcome. Mission 6 has you save 10 pianos from Molten Lava, which for some reason doesn't instantly kill them. But can hurt Mario. There is a whole subsection on this one level where people are trying to get the world record that was uploaded by Average Trey VG two years ago. If you want more insight on this subsection, you can click the card right above to go straight to that video. Final level is Shadow the Hedgehog. Yep. Now we make it to Corona Mountain. There is no real strategy I think or see people use in this area other than at the end with the boat and getting to the boss. Be careful with the boat. I don't know. <laughs> Be careful. Uh, <laughs> be careful for the boat, I don't know. And the last trick used in Super Mario Sunshine speedrunning, rocket storage. Let me explain this last trick. Grab the rocket nozzle, switch the default nozzle, hold the L button, then switch the rocket nozzle, charge up, and when the rocket is about to send you up, let go of the L button, and when the rocket nozzle releases the water, instead of going up, you stay put. Keep repeating this process around three times, and once you feel like you have enough rocket storage, do not move your control stick. You'll instantly lose all that build up storage. Instead, sidestep holding L off a ledge to send yourself flying with all that built up rocket storage. And then you're at the final boss. Now we now know how rocket storage works and we are now at the final boss of the game. The run is basically done at this point. The boss is just so ridiculously easy that it would take some form of Joy-Con drift to mess up on this boss fight. Once you hit the five different points on the fight, bam, you just beat Super Mario Sunshine in one hour, 51 minutes and nine seconds. <laughs> Woo, let's go. Yeah, babe! Congrats! If you for some reason use this as a tutorial on how to run the game, I hope I helped. You may realize early on in the video I spoke about categories, such as the new file and the peach file. On speedrun.com, in Super Mario Sunshine categories, you can choose the timing method, new file if you're starting from the very start, and peach file if, once again, you skip the cutscenes in the beginning. I chose that timing method, so hypothetically speaking, rather than being 150th in the world, I'm technically 109th in the world for Super Mario Sunshine any percent on the Nintendo Switch. I'm content with that.